Hey guys, so today I'm going to share a video with you that will give you the three best ways to grow your network on LinkedIn. And so um, growing your network on LinkedIn, in case you're not familiar with LinkedIn, um, a network are people that have accepted your connection request. These are f called first level connections. They're very similar to friends on Facebook. So a first level connection on LinkedIn they're really valuable because you could send them in mail for free so if you're trying to generate leads or get new clients and you want a, a very effective way to reach out to people in mail is the best way to do it and LinkedIn at this point allows you to send free in mail and as many in mails as you want to people who are your first level connections and being that in mail is 100 percent deliverable it's really an effective and measurable way to generate leads so the key is growing a network that's going to be responsive to what you're selling and so there's a couple different ways to do this um, the first most obvious way is sending connection requests to the people that you want to contact and let me show you so let's say you wanted to reach project managers that live in Los Angeles. You would use LinkedIn's advanced search feature. Even with a free profile, you could do this. And then you would just type in the title and then the location. So for those of you who are very familiar with LinkedIn and this is going too slow for you, just hold on. I'm going to get to some advanced concepts in a moment. Uh, but this is just for the basic LinkedIn user. And so you're just going to hit apply. And LinkedIn will search for everyone that is a project manager that lives in Los Angeles. And what you do is you just hit the connect button. You can choose to add a note if you want or just send now and LinkedIn will send the generic request. I found it doesn't make much of a difference when doing this uh, on a larger scale. The percentages of people that accept to the people that don't accept um, are going to be just a couple percentages points off so if you send out a hundred invites and you sent it with just the basic LinkedIn um, LinkedIn message uh, that they send the generic message then you are not going to have much of a percentage difference if you sent a personalized message I prefer to send a generic because it just saves time so when you're doing lead generation work um, it just saves time just to send a generic message but that's up to you so I know LinkedIn uh, suggests that you use the uh, customized message, which it, it, it might be good for certain situations. But moving on, um, there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat. But anyway, this is how you start building a network. You send connection requests because a percentage of these people are going to view your profile. And sometimes this can generate uh, clients or leads right away. So if you have a good profile that's a good sales page for what you're selling and people view your profile, I'd say about you know 70 to 80 percent of the people that receive an invite are going to actually view your profile so it's good to have a well set up profile and when they do view your profile maybe you have something on there that, that sparks their interest and they're going to reply back to you and ask you for more information so if they don't another percentage are going to accept your invite so what happens is that people that accept your invite essentially it's like they're opting in to be on your list because th that's what they're doing when they when they accept your invite they can then see anything that you post in your timeline just like your friends can on Facebook so this is a great way to promote your business when you have a large network of targeted prospects if you make relevant posts about your business and set it up and set those posts up in ways where it's also interesting to them so it doesn't always have to be an advertisement about your business but it can be um, if the posts are interesting they might look at your profile if you set up a post in the right way using some services like click clap or or um, or or some other services that allow you to put a banner over the post like a banner overlay over any content that you post um, it's a really good way to give people that information that's relevant but also promote your business in a way that's not too pushy so you're not always putting advertisements out there so First level connections can read anything that you post if they happen to be surfing their timeline at the, at the time that you make the post. Um, and you can also send first level connections a direct message in in mail. And that's an extremely effective way. So step number one, process number one, is to press the connect button on targeted 
targeted people based on their titles, industries, location, etc. So that's the very basics of creating a network, just going out there, finding the right people, and pressing the connect button manually. Okay? There might be some programs out there, software that allows you to press those buttons uh, using a bot, but just keep in mind that LinkedIn's terms and conditions don't let you use bots. Um, and they have a very smart tech department. They have algorithms that can uh, detect these things, so just be careful. You don't want to get your profile restricted. There's other ways to do a more mass type of marketing on LinkedIn that's a bit safer uh, and will keep you sheltered from getting your personal profile restricted, and I'll go over those in a minute. But anyway, um, a, sur a very useful service for generating a large network, getting people to accept your connection requests or even send you connection requests is a site called TopLinked. Now TopLinked essentially what they give you is a list of people who have joined up for their service and, I'll, and these are open networkers. These are people that have said specifically that they're okay with getting invites. They want to accept invites from anyone who sends it to them because really all they're interested in is having a large network. Now, TopLink works. So if you download one of their lists here, if you sign up for TopLink, it's just, you can sign up for a free account or it's $9.95 a month if you want a premium account. With the free account, you get access to these free lists and you can then import those lists into LinkedIn over here you just go uh, import file and you would import that list and then LinkedIn automatically sends an invite out to every single one of these people instantly so within a very short time you're growing your network with people people who are open networkers they might not be in the right industry for what you're selling um, but that is what TopLink is about it's just about growing your database as large as possible if you sign up to be on their list, then you're going to get put on this list. Other people will start inviting you, sending you invites, and so you can start growing your network exponentially that way. So it's a you know a very fast way to get thousands of people to be on your network. Now, <clears throat> the drawbacks with TopLink is that you don't know who you're inviting. So most likely, a lot of the people that are open networkers, you know, they're they're most likely trying to sell you something. You know, they're, they're not necessarily, uh, if, you're, if you have a service that sells to a very specific industry, you know, TopLink is going, not going to be super effective for you because probably very few of the buyers in your industry are going to be uh, on these TopLink lists. TopLink is definitely geared towards marketers who want to grow their database. So people just like you who just want to get a database and grow it and grow their network then TopLink is a good solution. However, the, the drawback is that you can't determine who you're sending invites to. So the list doesn't provide anything but email addresses. And when you sign up for here, then any one of TopLink members can send you a, an invite. And to me, you know, it, it, like for a lead generation um, perspective, for the goal of generating leads uh, for specific services, this is not a great option because it floods your, your network with all types of people who are not going to be the right fit for what my clients are selling or what I'm selling uh, for the most part. If I'm selling something very broad, then yeah, this is good. So if I, I don't know, if you're, if you're selling something that everybody can use, a consumer product or something like that, then something like this might be very useful for you and very inexpensive. But if you have, if you're, if you're, let's say a marketing manager and you're selling to, you know, if you need leads for your sales team, specifically from, let, let's say, you know, insurance agents, let's say you want your, your sales team to be connected with insurance agents or owners of insurance agencies, this is not going to be a good uh, fit for you because these people are not, for the most part, going to be insurance agents or owners of insurance agents. You're going to want to go to LinkedIn and find insurance agents and click the connect button. You're going to want to have your team do that. So TopLink is good for some things, but not for others. But what the point of showing this to you is that it is one way to grow your network very quickly. But now I'm going to go into another method for growing your network that's going to be specifically if you want to grow a network with very specific people that has very specific titles in very specific industries. So technique number three. Hire freelancers 
to send out invites for you, not through your account, but through their accounts, okay? You want to hire freelancers for a very cheap rate, so you can hire for as low as $3 an hour on, on, on Upwork, and you'll find people that can do this for you. And these people can use their profiles to send out invites for you. Now, you might be asking yourself, why would I... What, what benefit do I get from having someone else send out invites for me from their profile? I don't get the, inv I don't get the, the, the network. Well, that's not true. Because whenever someone accepts an invite, you can download their email address. Okay? So let's say you hire 10 freelancers to go onto LinkedIn and use their profiles to each send out invites to people from specific niches in your target market. So let's say you had one freelancer um, sending invites to uh, insurance agents in New York, another one sending out to insurance agents in, in Miami, another one sending out to Los Angeles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Very soon, they're going to start building their own networks of insurance agents because people accept invites, you know, a percentage of people accept invites. Even if you're your guy is sending from India, um, they're going to have people that accept their invites. You can increase the percentage of how many people accept their invites if you have your VAs quote unquote Americanize their profile. So instead of um, saying that they live in India, they change their profile to someplace in the United States. And this will increase the amount of acceptance rates, but it does also put their profile in a bit of danger with LinkedIn because if LinkedIn finds out that they switched their, their location, um, they can have their profile restricted. But if you're clear with that with the freelancer, some of them don't mind. They'll, they'll try it anyway. So basically, that's a, a detail in the process of doing this that you have to take into account. But the overall message is that if you use freelancers <clears throat> to connect with people in your target market, pretty soon they're going to start building their own network. So they'll, you, let's say you have 10 freelancers doing this and each of them had, you know, 400 people that accepted their connection request. That's 4,000 people now that are insurance agents that you can have your freelancers message or post stuff for you onto their profiles about your business. That's a, net, that's a network, that's an audience of 4,000 very targeted people. And now this is how it can actually benefit your profile, your LinkedIn account, is because then you would ask your freelancers to download the data, the, the emails of their connections and give them to you. You can then take that file, those files, and upload them to your LinkedIn account and LinkedIn will automatically send an invite to every single one of those people that, that you have the emails for. And this only works, so, so LinkedIn allows you to import emails into your, into your account, but what they don't tell you is that they only send out invites to email addresses that are specifically associated with live LinkedIn accounts. And those are called LinkedIn um, primary email addresses. Those are the emails that people use to create their LinkedIn accounts. And the data that your freelancers are going to be getting for you are the primary email addresses. So when LinkedIn gets an email address that's not a primary, let's say it gets an info at, you know, companyname.com, LinkedIn says it sends an invite out to them, but it really doesn't because LinkedIn actually got sued uh, in a class action lawsuit uh, uh, for spam complaints for doing this. So now invites only go out to LinkedIn primary email addresses, okay? So the data that your team is going to be collecting for you is extremely, extremely valuable. And you can use that to import into your profile. And so let's say you, have a, you import a list of 4,000 insurance agents and that's your target market. You import that list, LinkedIn sends out 4,000 invites instantly. Imagine how long it would take you to, to manually press the connect button on 4,000 invites. It would take a long time, you know, and it's, it's, it would be quite expensive if you hire somebody to do that, you know. So um, this list that they generate for you is going to be very valuable. And LinkedIn sends out the invites instantly. And then those people can actually, will about 80% will view your profile, okay? And then about a good percentage, anywhere from, 
you know, 20 to 50% will accept your invite. And then you have a really targeted network of your own that you can message right through your own profile. So that's method number three. So you can hire people. Now, I'm going to make a disclaimer here. I'm not making this video because I just want to share information with you for free. I actually do sell a service. And the service is that, you know, over the years of doing LinkedIn marketing, I've collected the primary email addresses of many, many LinkedIn members. And my database is targeted so that it is, um, it is uh, segmented by industry, by title, by location, by keywords. And so if you are looking to have a very quick way to jump ahead of this process, if you don't want to hire anybody, if you just want the list and want to import it into your profile, a targeted industry specific list, that's the data that I have. So, you know, please feel free to contact me and we could talk about how you can get this data. So I hope this was helpful. So that just to recap, there's three main ways to uh, grow your database and um, they each have their benefits depending on what you need. Um, personally, for lead generation, I like to have targeted networks, people that are specifically interested in buying what I'm selling. And the best way to do that is by option number two, or I'm sorry, option number three, hiring VAs or using a list that's already in existence of LinkedIn primary email addresses that I can just import into my profile or into the profiles of anyone that's working for me. So uh, I hope that's helpful. And uh, guys, please let me know if you have any questions. I'll put my con contact information in the description and uh, feel free to subscribe as well for more videos like this in the future. Thanks. Bye-bye.